Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the next segment of this beautiful, beautiful uh, series known as Supplications from Revelation. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, his household. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless every one of us, grant us goodness in this world and the next. My brothers, my sisters, we were taking a look at some of the supplications of the Prophet Ibrahim, or Abraham, may peace be upon him, alayhi salatu wa salam. And I made mention of how broad his supplications were. They were not just for himself. They were not only for his offspring, but they included cities. They included the whole globe. They included you and I. They were for produce. They were for guidance. And they had so many different angles and aspects. In his own life, he also went through hardship. Allah did not give him offspring for a very, very long time. Many of us, we get married, mashallah, we take it for granted, and we expect to have children at a certain time, not realizing that sometimes one of two things happen. Well, initially, those who get offspring, I'm not talking about those because that is quite normal. But one of two things happen to the rest. Sometimes Allah delays something. So while you think that you would achieve offspring or you would get children in the next so many years, uh, and Allah says, no, I want it to delay, prolong further, 10, 15 years, then I will give you offspring. Why? It's Allah's plan. He wants you to come, become closer to Him. He wants you to expand on anything else. He probably has chosen something else for you. You need to understand it, pick it up and work towards it. And you need to, you need to be a person who's happy with what Allah's chosen for you while trying to achieve what would really make you happy year. You are still happy with the decree of Allah and you know that He's done it for a reason. And some of these reasons we understand, some of them we don't. Secondly, Sometimes Allah chooses not to give you at all. That also is the plan of Allah. So here's Ibrahim alayhi salam. He didn't have children. Years passed by. He still didn't have children. And he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi habli min as-salihin. Rabbi habli min as-salihin. Oh Allah, grant me offspring who will be pious, who will be good, who will be acceptable to you. Now, when we ask for offspring, a lot of the times, and I've seen this with people who are asking Allah for children, you know, because Allah makes it sometimes uh, makes them uh, or gives them a bit of a pause. They say, oh Allah, grant me offspring, grant me children, grant me children. Add a clause to it. Oh Allah, grant me good children, pious children. Give me children who will obey you. Give me children who will uh, please you and so on. Very interesting how to add something gives value to the dua. So don't just say, oh Allah, grant me children. Oh Allah, give me children who will be uh, the coolness of my eyes and always within your obedience. Or when it comes to money, wealth, people ask Allah, oh Allah, give me, bless me with money. Oh Allah, I got to pay my bills. Oh Allah, I got a debt. Oh Allah, help me to pay my debt. Wait, add a clause to it. Oh Allah, grant me wealth that I can use to earn your pleasure. And then when you get it, use it to earn the pleasure of Allah. Because sometimes people say, Oh Allah, when you give me, I'm going to do this. I will build a masjid. I will do this for the poor. I'm going to give so much percentage. I'm going. Then when Allah gives you, it doesn't come. Because you say, no, I still need to do this. I need to do that. Don't be hypocritical. Call out to Allah. Ask Him. When you're asking Him, add Him in the equation. In the sense that you're saying, Oh Allah, I want you to fulfill my need. And when you do, I would like it to be fulfilled in a way that I'm going to be able to do X, Y, and Z for your cause. Now, I quickly want to distinguish between people who connect something uh, that Allah will give them to something they will do if Allah gives them. That's not what we're saying. So you don't say, Oh Allah, if you give me children, then I'm going to give you this. Oh Allah, if you give me this, then I'm going to give you that. That is not the way forward. That is not actually correct. It's not right to say that. But what you say, Oh Allah, grant me those who are good. Grant me wealth that is blessed. Grant me wealth that I will be able to spend in your cause. I've already got a plan. It's all there. I just want that wealth to be able to do this. I want this wealth so that it can be part of what I'm going to do. There's a subtle difference between the two. I'm saying, Oh Allah, give me pious offspring. 
I'm not saying, oh Allah, if you give me the offspring, then uh, I'm going to do this for you and that for you. You see, one is called a nadr, when a person uh, promises Allah that, oh Allah, if I pass my examination, then I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to give a charity. Allah says, I don't need that charity, so may maybe you don't need to pass. You see, it's like we are saying to Allah, you need the charity. So if you give me this, I'm going to give you that. So the hadith of Muhammad in Sahih al-Bukhari says that that nadr is actually uh, makruh. It's not, it's detested. It is extracted from a person who doesn't want to do the deeds. Very interesting. I think some of us might never have heard of what I've just said now, where you say, oh Allah, if you make me pass my examination, oh Allah, if you cure me, then I'm going to read the Quran once. Allah says, you, I, I didn't ask you, meaning I'm not going to benefit from you reading the Quran. But the correct way of doing it is to say, Oh Allah, I'm, I've given a charity, I'd like you to help me to pass. So the charity is not connected to whether or not I'm go you're going to make me pass. But I'm pleading with you to make me pass because you are the greatest. You have it in you to make me pass. Indeed, I'm going to work as hard as I can. That brings me to another quick point. When you are supplicating, when you're calling out to Allah, don't be lazy. And don't let that be your only port of call. Because you say, oh Allah, I want to pass. Oh Allah, help me to pass uh, my examination. But you haven't worked. You haven't studied. You haven't tried. Allah says, well, I gave you all the, uh, the, the tools of passing. I gave them to you. You didn't use them. So while you are calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him to make you pass, he has now given you the ability, the capacity. You work as hard as you can and then, and then you will actually achieve that by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you cut it just, and you just asked Allah, then Allah will also cut it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam beautifully words this. He says, Rabbi habli min as salihin. Oh Allah, grant me pious offspring. Those who will be the coolness of my eyes. I diverted a little bit to tell you that when you are calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should make sure that you don't connect it to an act of worship you will do as a result of Allah giving you, but rather do that act of worship and call out to Allah. So this nadr, it's called a nadr, nadr meaning a vow, where you are vowing. You don't vow to Allah to say, if you give me, I'm going to give you, but rather you give and you do and you say, oh Allah, I've done this. But what happens to those who have already made a vow? Well, if you've already made a vow, you need to fulfill it. You need to make sure that you fulfill it. You don't say, oh Allah, if I pass, I'm going to go for Umrah and for Hajj. And when you pass, you don't go for the Hajj or for the Umrah. Some people say, oh Allah, if, if I pass, I'm going to fast for 60 days. Why did you make it so difficult? Just say, oh Allah, uh, I'm going to fast for three days and I'd like you to make me pass. So whether or not I pass, I'm still going to fast for the three days, but I'd like you to make me pass. There is a difference between the two. And it's all connected to the greatness of Allah. If you understand that Allah is independent, you would understand He does not need your acts of worship. Rather, you need your acts of worship. May Allah make it easy. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard this dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, at a certain point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him offspring. Allah granted him Ismail alayhi salam. He was already old. And when he got that child, he actually thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. He praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Oh Allah, I thank you for having given me these children or this, these offspring at old age. Uh, and he made a dua for those children. So this is Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And he says, you see the term kibar is used. Uh, which means, you know, kibr means pride, but kibar means old age. So we're not talking of kibr, which is the pride, but we're talking of kibar. In old age, he was granted Ismail and Ishaq, alayhima as-salam. And then he makes a dua for these uh, children of his, and he keeps on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, I thank you for what you've bestowed upon me. Let's listen to these beautiful verses. Verse number 39 onwards of uh, Surah Ibrahim. 
الحمد لله الذي وهب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب He says, I thank Allah, I praise Allah. All praise is due to Allah who blessed me. Remember I said in one of the previous episodes that the term Wahhab, the name of Allah, Al-Wahhab is used when asking for offspring, for children, because it's a gift of Allah. So he says, I, all praise is due to Allah who blessed me, who granted me. Upon old age, my children Ismail and Ishaq, for indeed, Allah is the all-hearer of the prayers. Allah hears every single dua and supplication. Pause for a moment. This man's been asking Allah for so many years. He's now old. But the way he words it, he says, I thank Allah for giving me Ismail and Ishaq. And I declare that Allah hears all prayers. Many of us, when we... Uh, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we call out to Him once, twice, thrice, then we say, Allah's not hearing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from uttering statements like those because Allah hears. Ibrahim alayhi salam is saying, Inna Rabbi la sami'u dua. And you know what? He's so happy. He's got Ismail, he's got Ishaq, two boys. And he is saying, Oh Allah, you are the one who hears the duas. Then he says, after that, what's the next most important thing? Oh Allah, you've blessed me with offspring. I asked you for offspring. I want you to make my offspring from among those who read salah. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salah. Oh Allah, make me from those who establish prayer. And wamin dhurriyati. And from my offspring, make them from those who establish prayer. رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَى O Allah, accept my prayer. Grant me acceptance. Listen to my prayer and accept it exactly as I'm asking for it. Now, there are two things we learn. One is, he's making a dua for his offspring. Two is, he's starting with himself. Amazing method of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So when you're asking Allah, O Allah, make my children pious, you need to be making an effort to be pious. O Allah, help my daughter to be able to dress appropriately, modestly, filled with values and morals of a very high level that you would be pleased with and you are not worried about it yourself. How is your dress code? How is your connection with Allah? How is your obedience? You need to make sure that what you want in your children, you instill within yourself. You want goodness from them? Instill it within yourself. You want them to quit sin? Quit sin yourself. You want them to be the coolness of your eyes? You also need to obey Allah's instruction. Try to be the best possible person, even to your parents. So this is something that we need to learn from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's beautiful dua. It's not just about him. It's about his offspring. But he starts off by saying, make me exemplary and my offspring as well. They can follow my example. How many of us we are not role models to our own children. We are not role models. We teach them to look at others to find role models, yet Allah made us automatic role models by virtue of us being parents. So surely we need to call out to Allah for ourselves, make an effort and call out for our children. It's like how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a pious person uh, in Surah Al-Ahqaf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the one who's conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches the age of 40, which is the peak. Why is the age of 40 always known as the peak? Because man's strength continues to climb. He gets to 40, he's at the top of the mount. After that, he starts going down. You have the first aches and swollen this and uh, air pain here and your eyesight starts failing you slightly until you get to 60, 70, 80 and then, mashallah, you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us. So Allah says in the Quran, Hatta ida balaga ashuddahu wa balaga arba'ina sanatan. Speaking about a pious human being, when he reaches his peak and he's reached now 40 years old, what should he be saying? 
قال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين He makes a dua, he calls out to Allah at the age of 40 saying, Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be thankful for the favors you have bestowed upon me and that which you have bestowed upon my parents. And oh Allah, help me, grant me the acceptance to be able to do good deeds that would please you and make my offspring also uh, those who are good, pious and who will please you. So when a person reaches the age of 40, he now calms down. He's worried more about his own connection with Allah. He starts worrying about his children who are in their teens, perhaps in their twenties. He's worried about them. And he starts making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Oh Allah, help them, grant them, guide them, etc. Because now he knows he's going to be passing the baton on. So we make a dua for our offspring. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open their doors. And remember, here Allah says, the one who arrives at the age of 40, when he is concerned about his relationship with Allah, he'll start supplicating for his children. Aslih li fi dhurriyyati. That's a powerful dua. It actually means, Aslih li fi dhurriyyati. Make the goodness within me, in my offspring. So by Correcting my offspring and making them pious, you've actually made me worthwhile as well. I've left behind progeny who will pray for me, benefit me by, in, by virtue of sadaqa jariya, which means it's a continued charity. When you do good and you've left behind goodness, Allah will continue rewarding you for those who benefited from that goodness right up to the end of time. You have had to leave that goodness and then Allah will grant it acceptance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is speaking about the importance of making dua for offspring and the importance of seeking forgiveness of Allah. Inni tubtu ilayk. I am indeed seeking your forgiveness. I have returned to you. I have repented to you, O Allah. Wa inni min al muslimin. And I am from among those who submits unto you. I submit unto you. And I repent to you, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam that he has made for his offspring. And Allah blessed him as a result of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him so much and his offspring as well. Now, he was so genuine in this calling out to Allah that Allah made it such that all the messengers to follow after Ibrahim alayhi salam were from his family. Imagine. If you look at those who called out to Allah the most, they were the prophets of Allah. Subhanallah. You and I who need to call out to Allah more, we've called out less than the Prophet Sallallahu We've called out less than Ibrahim alayhi salam. Open the pages of the Quran. Look at the du'as of Ibrahim. We will be ashamed of how little we call out to Allah. When these people who were so close to Allah, they knew the value of the du'a. So they kept on calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrati wa yad'unana raghaban wa rahaba wa kanu lana khashi'in Surah Al-Anbiya Allah is saying those messengers they used to make haste towards our obedience and towards goodness towards doing good and they would call out to us they would call out to us with hope hoping that we would grant them and fearing the rejection of the prayer or fearing that whatever they wanted may not come. They knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give it, but the time frame, the exact way of that dua being answered. I remember mentioning in one of the episodes how Allah always responds, but sometimes not exactly with what you want, sometimes with what He knows is better for you. It may not be precisely what you want, but it's definitely something better for you. Let's look at another beautiful dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We can start it off inshallah. It is so beautiful because when he was young, very young, and he faced his father. His father was disobeying Allah by worshipping everything besides Allah. They threatened him that if you didn't follow 
by worshipping these idols and by doing what your father's doing, we're going to deal with you in a very harsh way. So he spoke to them. He says, how can I fear you? Yet you have not feared the Lord of the worlds. And then he makes a beautiful dua. Let's listen to these beautiful statements that are recorded for us in Surah Al-Shu'ara. He says, فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوٌ لِي إِلَّا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ All these deities are an enemy to me besides the Lord of the worlds. Everything besides the Lord of the worlds that is being worshipped, I've got nothing to do with those things. For me, they're enemies. Besides the Lord of the worlds, who is the Lord of the worlds? Because it's easy for someone to look at someone and say, that's the Lord of the worlds. That's the Lord of the worlds. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, as young as he was, he gives a description. Who is the Lord of the worlds? He says, الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ The one who created me, so he is the one who will guide me. وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ The one who feeds me and the one who will quench my thirst and who quenches my thirst. وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Whenever I am sick or ill, he is the one who cures me. وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحْيِينَ The one who, who causes my death and then shall cause my resurrection. وَالَّذِي أَطْمَعُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينَ The one whom I have full hope that he will forgive my sin on the day of judgment. He is the Lord of the worlds. Then he turns to Allah and he says, رَبِّ هَبْ لِي حُكْمًا وَأَلْحِقُنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ Oh my Rabb, oh my Rabb, Grant me authority, grant me goodness, grant me wisdom, and join me with the righteous. Join me with the righteous. Subhanallah. Here is a man who Allah has just chosen. In fact, he's a young boy still at the point where he made this dua. Rabbi habli hukman wa alhiqni bis salihin. Oh Allah, grant me that authority. Grant me some form of power, uh, meaning to be able to convey your message. And join me with those who are pious, those who are righteous. Al-Hiqni bis salihin And he doesn't end there. Allah makes mention of these du'as. I want to say something. Imagine you and I made a du'a and Allah made mention of it. It means it's a powerful du'a. Allah must have loved it to make mention of it. Here are the du'as of those whom Allah loved and He loved their du'as. He loved their supplications. So use these words to supplicate unto Allah. رَبِّ هَبْ لِي حُكْمًا وَأَلْحِقْنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ وَجَعَلْ لِي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ And O oh Allah, let me have a truthful tongue in the others. Now that, that's a beautiful dua. What it means is, O oh Allah, when others speak about me, let them speak about me with good words. When I'm gone and people will be talking about me, let them say nice things about me. Allahu Akbar. With us in our lives already, people say nasty things. And I think people cannot wait for us to depart so that they can live in peace sometimes. <laughs> May Allah not make that happen to us. But it's a reality. We are asking here through the words that were used by Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, Rabbi, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَجَعَلْ لِي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ Oh Allah, make for me a beautiful remembrance in those who are to come after me. When we talk about Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, there is something amazing you need to know. Every salah, when we are sitting in the tashahud, in the last part of the prayer, we say, Oh Allah, bless Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam in the same way you have blessed Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. That is a beautiful gift that Allah makes mention of. And that's a beautiful supplication that we've just left you with. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we wish to continue in the next episode from where we've left off. And inshallah, until we meet again, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.